With the Kamen Rider franchise going on for decades, there are bound to be certain levels of trivia within the fandom that not everybody is going to know. I've compiled every iceberg I could find and streamlined them to go over as much as I can, with the help from my community comments and my friend Liz. And Furbus. Though keep in mind that a lot of icebergs I found were similar or had the same ideas and topics, so I'm going to group them as I see fit. The deeper we dive, the more obscure and weird these entries get. This is going to be a long one, so let's see how deep this iceberg goes and get started. Level 1. Common Rider Eras Starting off with the basic groundwork are the eras of Kamen Rider, which can be divided up into three parts. The Showa era, starting from 1971's Kamen Rider, although Kamen Rider Black, Black RX, Shin Prologue, ZO, and J are grouped into this phase. The Heisei era from 1999's Kamen Rider Kuga and to 2019's Kamen Rider Geo, plus some classify 2009's Kamen Rider Double to Geo as Heisei Phase 2. And the Reiwa era from 2020's Kamen Rider Zero One onward. The eras are named after the Japanese emperors that ruled at the time. Shotaro Ishinomori, the creator of Kamen Rider. He was a mangaka who wrote long-running works such as Cyborg 009, Saratobe Ichan, and Hotel, among many, many others. He's known as a pillar of manga works and, of course, tokusatsu. Sadly, he passed away in 1998, but his legacy lives on. x is rad. Kamen Rider x is a very popular season, and I'm going to attribute that to it being based on video games. You might have heard other variations of this meme, like with Kamen Rider Build or Kamen Rider Gaim. There's nothing wrong with liking these seasons. They're just the most well-known to newcomers. Amazon.com New fans of the show most likely buy merch from Amazon, specifically from the American branch. There's also Bluefin brands, but Amazon is the most known place, since it's also not common to just see Rider merch out in the wild. Not to bring down Amazon that much, but there are far better places, and Amazon's Rider merch is usually extremely overpriced. Hey, at least it's convenient, right? Official Rider Subs Speaking of subtitles, getting anything writer related in America has been practically an uphill battle, let alone getting official subs. And I mean specifically America, as saying the West is more than just the United States. As of this video, at least two episodes of each Heisei seasons have been subbed on the Toei Tokusatsu World YouTube channel, along with a couple of movies as well. Shout Factory has also released Kamen Rider Ichigo to streaming, and at the time of this recording, Zero One will be releasing on physical media. Before all of that though, the only official releases available were with the really expensive Kamen Rider V3 set from Generation Kikaider in Hawaii, and Kamen Rider Amazon through Amazon Prime. Plus, there are some weird subs through other channels, but all of this can be in a video in itself, so I'll just stop there. I'm glad we're getting official subs at all, even if there are some practices I don't agree with. And of course, you can support the official release. Is this Power Rangers? A phrase that became kind of a meme due to how often it's said, or at least mentioned, by those that are new to Kamen Rider. There's nothing wrong with this statement either, tokusatsu as a whole, let alone Kamen Rider, isn't common knowledge to the general person, so the easiest comparison will be Power Rangers. What's Shoa? Since the Reiwa and Heisei periods are more modern, new fans might take a while to become regular viewers or even know of the Showa era, which started in 1971 with the original Kamen Rider, and ended with the movie Kamen Rider J. These might be seen as even cheesier than your typical old school Godzilla movie, but you never know if you'd be into that old stuff at all, so check them out. Level 2. Watches Marco Satsu. Hey, that's me. I make videos based on tokusatsu. Uh, mostly Kamen Rider though. <laughs> With that said, please don't use History of Kamen Rider just as a way to say that you watch the whole show. Thank you. Ultraman Crossover Ultraman vs. Kamen Rider is a special that aired in 1993 that's mostly a clip show, but has Kamen Rider Ichigo grow giant to team up with the original Ultraman. In the end, it was revealed that this was just the imagination of a kid. Masked Rider The first Kamen Rider adaptation for English audiences came in the form of Saban's Masked Rider. We don't talk about that one. Okay, okay. It's an adaptation focusing on Kamen Rider Black RX, spliced with footage of some other Kamen Rider movies. It also had a crossover with Power Rangers. Speaking of which, Mass Rider went the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers approach and tried to make it more, for the lack of a better term, kiddified. Plenty of corny jokes, fight scenes filled with oyas, and a furbus. This adaptation isn't very well liked, and you can most likely see why. It's not even fun in a so bad it's good kind of way. Despite that, it lives on in infamy as its theme song stays in our head. Dragon Knight. The second Kamen Rider adaptation for English audiences was Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, which took footage from Kamen Rider Ryuki. 
Dragonite is more well loved than Saban's Masked Rider because Dragonite is a lot closer to any other Con Rider season and is actually watchable. Dragonite takes itself more seriously as there's more at stake between characters because if someone loses a fight, they spend an eternity in what's basically purgatory. The story is very good and not as corny as Power Rangers or Masked Rider. Plus the use of Ryuki footage is smart and there's a lot of fantastic original footage too. Unfortunately, it had an unlucky streak being screwed by the network and now it's not even widely available. I'd say it's worth hunting down. Or looking it up on YouTube. Summer slash winter movies. Kamen Rider certainly loves its movies so it usually has at least one in the summer and one in winter. With the winter movies typically being crossovers with the previous writer and the summer movie being its own original story. Heisei Phase 2 started this trend but Phase 1 writers had at least one major movie for themselves too. They all range in canonicity and quality but mainly if you like the season then there's always more. Karate Bugman is cool. A common phrase said by fans to refer to Kamen Rider since well they're bugs that fight using martial arts. At least that's how it started. Now it's used more as a tongue-in-cheek kind of way. Homosapine. Something Rintero, Conrader Blades, says in Conrader Saber. It's a funny fan sub, I guess. Neo Heisei. While many refer to the era between Double and Geo as Heisei Phase 2, some also refer to it as Neo Heisei. Though it's gotten some disdain as Neo Heisei makes it seem like Emperor Heisei returned as a cyborg or something. I personally don't mind the phrase, but I do understand why others prefer Phase 2. And I do wonder if there are other ways we can refer to post-double seasons. Common Rider Video Games of course Kamen Rider has video games, even dating all the way back to the Famicom and one being as recent as the Nintendo Switch. They're mainly fighting and arcade style beat-em-ups that appeared on most consoles, though sometimes there will be a couple of genre changes too. There's Sega no Keifu on the PS2, a puzzle adventure game that reminds me of Resident Evil, Batride Wars, a Dynasty Warrior style game with some flashy gameplay, and there was even a Toy to Life game called Summon Ride on the Wii U. I think most agree that the Climax Heroes games, especially Wizard, are the ones you should absolutely play. They're 2.5D fighters with dozens of riders and a lack of balance, so of course it's going to be fun. The Dragon Knight game is also based on Climax Heroes, which is also okay. A couple more recent console games, Climax Fighters and Scramble, are arena brawlers so if you've played any anime fighting game ever, you've basically played these too. Not that they're bad or anything, though I do think they get extremely repetitive. The most recent Conrader console game is Memory of Heroes, a team up between Conrader Double, O's, and Zero One. It's a linear adventure game that I think is really, really good. I think everybody should try it at least once. Not for $60 though. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, there are even more games on handhelds and mobile. Yes, Toei does want you to spend your money on more than just toys. Deal with it GIF. A popular gift that came from Conrider Wizard, where its last two episodes had a cameo from Conrider Decade. It's a pretty cool moment and it just looks great. Perfect for me material. Level 3. Number Theory. A tongue-in-cheek fan theory about the first few Heisei Phase 2 seasons following a pattern. Kamen Rider Double uses two Gaia memories, O's has three medals, and Forze has four switches. Some would continue it past that like Kamen Rider Wizard having a five-fingered hand on his driver and a Gaim lock seat opening to look like a six. Although the number theory goes beyond just looks, as Double through Forze each include other ideas and themes coinciding with their numbers in the show. Plus the number theory going beyond Forze just seems forced. Hiroshi Fujioka Accident during the filming of episode 10 of Kamen Rider, actor Hiroshi Fujioka got into an accident while turning on his bike. The injury he received made him have to leave the show for a while. During his departure, a new character, Kamen Rider Nigo, was introduced and was there for the remainder of the show. Nigo would introduce many writer staples and tropes such as the henshin or transformation pose. Fujioka eventually healed up, making guest appearances on the show before staying for good after episode 52. Returning Actors Within Tokusatsu, not just Kamen Rider, there are a lot of actors who you start to recognize who pop up again and again across the genre. For example, in the original Kamen Rider, the character Tobei Tachibana was played by Kiji Kobayashi, who also played Cap in Ultraman. Kaiza Day. To transform into Kamen Rider Kaiza, its user, Masato Kusaka, has to dial in 913 parallel that to September 13th. It's a fan-made celebration that grew to Kasaka's actor Kohei Murakami joining in himself. There were even some cool Japanese announcements on Kaiza Day, such as the Kaiza Gear CSM being available for pre-order on that day, and an announcement of a Kaiza manga. Kasaka is a jerk of a character, but we all love to hate him, especially on Kaiza Day. Expensive shipping. 
most likely said by people who are starting to use services other than Amazon. Trust me, shipping may be more than you're used to, but it's more than worth it. Rider form hierarchy. I'm assuming this one is talking about rider forms being base to final. Well, it's generally known that way, but I think there's been some exceptions recently. We start with the rider's base form, which is what you can see the most, and it's what they start with, then they get super forms, and then a final form. Most recent seasons have had side grades for the base forms, side grades for super forms, ultra forms, mid-season upgrades, movie forms, special forms, money forms, so many forms. Point is, there are a lot of toys to sell, and some are more powerful than others. Geo versus Decade a crossover between two anniversary writers, Kamen Rider Geo and Kamen Rider Decade. This miniseries isn't very well liked for several reasons, including an out of nowhere gore scene and a really dumb looking upgrade. I'm guessing it's on here because it's fairly new, so more people would know about it right now. Oh, recency bias. Ghost is a bad series. Unfortunately, Kamen Rider Ghost is probably the least liked season in the franchise, to the point where not liking it became a meme and now an overused phrase. Don't make that dissuade you though, all Kamen Rider seasons are good, even Ghost and Saber. So as always, check them out if you're interested. Legend Rider Toys Kamen Rider gimmicks in Heisei Phase 2 have their own separate line of what's known as Legend Rider toys, gimmicks that include previous writers. Kamen Rider Double, for example, has Gaia memories focused on past writers and include their iconic sound effects. These are still ongoing and some mainline gimmicks even focus on past writers, like with Geo's ride watches and Revice's vice stamps. OHC Final Form Another common debate is what Oz's final form is, one such being his base Tataba, mostly as a meme, at least I hope, because King Oz used it, but the main arguments are between Tajador, Putotira, and two other movie forms. Tajador is a literal final form used in the show, plus it's a symbolic combination for the characters, Eiji and Ankh. Super Tataba and an upcoming form were used in a movie that came after the show, and they can be considered the most powerful of Oza's forms. Putotira debuted around the time Phase 2 final forms are set. It's the last combination he receives within the episodes, and it's shown the most within Toei's lineups of final forms. There are arguments for each of these, and I'd rather not get that much further into it right now, or else the comms are just gonna focus on this section. And besides, according to Toei, it's Putotira. Mobile Game Collabs These aren't as known as the other popular crossovers, which is why it's lower on the iceberg. Kamen Rider has had several collaborations with Japanese games such as Monster Strike, Yokai Watch, and even Puyo Puyo. One of these collabs did arrive in the United States with Puzzles and Dragons, which I played and was a lot of fun. The Bench This bench appears in the final scene of Kamen Rider Blade. If you want to know more, then it's a major spoiler, so cover your ears for 30 seconds if you don't want to hear it. Kenzaki and Hajime agree to never see each other again in order to stop the end of the world for story reasons. So the final scene in the show is Hajime walking down this road where he imagines Kenzaki sitting on the bench. It's infamous in a good and bad way, as it's extremely dramatic and quite sad. But it's also a bit cheesy since, you know, it's a bench. Level 4. Kamen Rider Wiki of course, Kamen Rider has fan-made wikis too, but honestly, the main one isn't that great outside of the super basic info. Since literally anybody can edit it, you'll come across some great trivia such as Asuna from x being a reference to Asuna from Sword Art Online because their names are similar. Admittedly, the wiki has been getting better and those random bits of unrelated comments are getting phased out, though you'll mostly just get the basics of Kamen Rider and not much else. Wizard marrying a Precure character. A cute promo of Kamen Rider Wizard marrying a Precure character. That's all. Skullman. Before Kamen Rider, there was Skullman, a story of a vigilante who famously rode a motorcycle. This one-shot manga by Shinomori is popularly known as being the work that inspired Kamen Rider. But evidence would suggest otherwise as the original outline for Kamen Rider preceded the inclusion of Skullman. However, the design of Skullman did inspire the look of Ichigo, as well as his motorcycle, so there's that. Kamen Rider memes. There is no shortage of Kamen Rider memes, though some are more known in the States than in Japan. One of these memes is when <laughs> Yuki's opening usually just comes out of nowhere as a surprise, so you can easily insert it in a meme during an unexpected moment. Dan Kuruto is a character in Kamen Rider X8 who is very eccentric and makes for plenty of meme material. Amazon Season 2's ending was a meme for a bit, as its music would begin during a twist ending. Just like Ryuki's opening, you can insert this basically anywhere you want and it'll most likely work. Also, Gaim. 
just Gaim in general. Like its first 15 episodes each have meme material that you've probably seen before. Gaim on HBO. A copy passed on an image that spread quickly through 4chan, saying that Conrader Gaim belongs on HBO next to shows like Game of Thrones and The Wire. Whether completely serious or not, it sounds just crazy enough to be taken ironically. Special store online buyer. Congrats, you've moved past buying on Amazon and are trying out other services like Mandarake. They have way more available writer stuff than Amazon ever will, including some rare collectibles you can't find anywhere else. Not an ad for Mandarake at all. They're just great. By the way, I'm open for sponsorships. If anybody from Monarake is watching this right now, I'd be forever grateful. Thank you. Leak toys. Another way people find out about forms and characters early is when toys get leaked through early magazines, plus listing in Japanese stores and more. SIC and SIC stories. The super imaginative Chogokin line are reimagined figures of superheroes created by Ishinomori, of course, including common writers, with designs such as Forze emphasizing his astronaut origins and Kuga looking more like a monster. These releases usually come with a side story involving said writers. They're non canon what if stories, unless stated otherwise. There isn't really easy access to read them in English, but they're short. Yusuke Onodeta even gets a third final form in one of the stories from being electrically shocked by Stronger and O Shouta combo. Yeah, they're just as crazy as they seem. Forze and Geo pronunciations. Some bring up how Conrider Forze and Geo are pronounced, such as Forze sometimes being said as Fors or Forza, plus Geo incorrectly being said as Zio. You could see these pronunciations through Romanji, but their katakana, you know, how it's written in Japanese, say Forze and Geo, respectively. Maybe you could get away with Forze and Zio in English since that's how they appear, but there's a huge difference between their intended English pronunciations and what it appears to be. Forze, Forze, Geo, Geo. Stage shows. This is a fun one. Stage shows are popular in Japan, being common for basically everything you can imagine, and of course, that includes Kamen Rider. There are those live musical performances that celebrate the music, fun standalone stage shows for children to enjoy, and even some stage shows that can be considered canon as they're part of a scene's continuity. No matter what reason they're for, you can bet that stage shows can be memed just as much as the actual season, and they do have amazing moments. One of the most recognizable stage shows was Gaim Gardens and Getsu, which came out years after Conrader Gaim but he's just that popular of a character. Plus, the stage show itself was pretty good in my opinion, and it used some great special effects. As if that wasn't enough, sometimes there are stage show exclusive common writers. They're often very cheap looking, but we do get some bangers too. Stage shows are the pinnacle of, you don't have to watch this, but they're fun. Ooh, actually, let's make that the question of the video. Would you like to see a common writer stage show in person? I mean, I'm probably never gonna have another moment like this, so let me know in the comments below. Common Rider G. A one off special used to advertise both Conrider Decade and to celebrate TV Asahi's anniversary, starring Goro Inagaki from SMAP. It focused on a wine themed writer who fights for love. It's not too long of a special, and the Decade cameo is pretty cool. Mangas. Kamen Rider has branched out to mangas, which should be obvious since Ishinomori was a mangaka. A popular series is Kamen Rider Spirits, but there have been more recent manga adaptations that either fit into the continuity of the original shows, such as Futo Detective and Amazon's Gaiden, or create a whole new continuity like the Kamen Rider Kuga manga, which is written by Inoue. He's everywhere. Purple Riders. Similar to how being a red shirt in Star Trek is a meme slash trope, being a purple common writer often means you'll meet a cruel fate. It doesn't just have to be death, sometimes they're kicked around and practically bullied by whoever's writing the season. I can only think of two purple common writers who end up at least okay-ish, so yeah, don't be a purple common writer. AR World Common Rider Decade introduced the multiverse through AR or Another Writer's Worlds. The show itself just says their stories featuring familiar writers with different users. They have nothing to do with previously established seasons other than sharing suits and a few ideas. A couple returning actors do show up, though they're supposed to be multiverse alternates too. Again, AR worlds come from Kamen Rider Decade, and they're basically just a multiverse. Final Villain Last Minute Power Up Just as the title states, some villains get a power up out of nowhere in the endgame of a show. It's been seen in more recent seasons, especially as a marketing tactic to sell toys. But hey, at least they look cool. Shocker is a Nazi group. This one is pretty obvious, but you'd probably be surprised by how many writer fans probably overlook this. Shocker was based off the Nazi party, appropriating their... <laughs> and everything. In the original Kamen Rider and Sky Rider, the characters Colonel Zoll and General Monster were even said to be ex-Nazi officers. 
Level 5. Daddy Issues. Again, Kamen Rider is basically a drama, and one weird recurring trope is that dads in Kamen Rider are jerks. They usually end up as major villains too. Collar Grabbing. Kamen Rider being a drama series has a lot of people grabbing each other's collars. It's kind of hot. The Odajiri Effect. The success of Kuga mainly came from its high viewership, though it wasn't only kids who were watching it, and neither was it from teenagers or young adults. Somehow, middle-aged women tune into the show so they could watch Joe Giri and how handsome he is. There are even some stories of mothers who stuck around to watch Kuga when their kids stopped. This phenomenon led it to being called the Odagiri Effect, where middle-aged women tune into a show just to watch the handsome lead actor. Toshiki and Oe's writing. Toshiki Inui is a well-known writer for the series, most notably writing Conrad or Fies, plus some of Hibiki and Decade. He has a very noticeable template when it comes to writing stories and characters, so he's a bit infamous in the fandom. Also, his dad was a writer for the original Kamen Rider, and his daughter also wrote some Kamen Rider works too. Hmm. How interesting. Kit bashing. Kamen Rider doesn't have the biggest budget, and the recent seasons show this by reusing and recoloring suits, sometimes referred to as kit bashing. Kamen Rider 01 probably has the most popular use of this, taking Kamen Rider Ichigata's armor and reusing it for other characters, though older shows are known to do this too. Art books. Exactly what it says. These cool art books that are usually part of a writer's merchandise lineup. Sometimes they even include fun trivia. Glitching drivers. Whenever drivers are released, people like to exploit features on them to find out sounds about forms, and sometimes final forms that haven't been revealed yet. Bandai has been trying to avoid this by having just the gimmick toys play the sound rather than the driver itself, though the 01 driver slot for the 02 add-on was exploited pretty hard. Common Rider Fan Adaptations as much as American viewers would like to see another American adaptation, it seems almost impossible at this point. But that doesn't mean some fans aren't willing to try. You can find so many threads, fanfics, and even full-on videos about fan-made adaptations. Ghost Summer Movie Cameo Ghost Cameo and Drive Summer Movie is notable as Ghost is shown in a different way here than in the actual show. He's a bit creepy in how he moves as he floats like a phantom. Some say Ghost was portrayed differently in the show cause moms didn't like how scary he appeared, though I can't find official confirmation on that. Level 6. Power Rider Saban Brands once trademarked the name Power Rider, but the trademark expired years later. As of now, we know nothing that was planned for the trademark, though it's easy enough to speculate that maybe it had to do with Kamen Rider. We also got some cool fan-made stuff from it. JDF and Dragon Knight at one point, Jason David Frank, who played Tommy in Power Rangers, was considered to play Len in Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, but the producers didn't want viewers to think Power Rangers and Kamen Rider were connected. Ryuki's 50 Riders Conrad Ryuki was originally going to involve 50 Kamen Riders in the season. Not all of them were going to show up, but besides that, it was still considered too expensive to include at least, well, even half of them. O's original ending one plan for O's was that Ankh was going to be the final boss and that Goto would die. Of course, that got changed due to Ankh's popularity. Missing Kamen Rider Toys Toy catalogs are meant to show off, well, the toys, but there are a few that just haven't shown up whatsoever. A couple of these famous missing toys are from Build, being F1 Saurus and Gold Scorpion. Some changes are also made when they were shown in the catalog to when they're in the show, such as Conrader Thouser's eye color originally being blue, and a couple of X8 Gashats going through slight design differences. Missing toys aren't only limited to the catalogs, as other toys just haven't seen an official release in any capacity despite appearing in movies and specials. There's still no release of a Bang Bang Tank Gashat or the Kill Boss gimmicks. Maybe they'll come out during anniversaries like with Necrom's usual bursts, but for now, they're still missing. McDonald's Gashat Conrader X8's gimmick is based on video games, and they're called Gashats. One of these was going to be used as a promotion for McDonald's. Even though we did get a Conrader X8 promo in McDonald's toys, we never really got a full-on McDonald's Gashat. At least one that's not like those little cardboard things. Double Suit Conrader Double, being over a decade old, is gonna see some wear and tear. Of course other suits are too, but for some reason, Double's suit just looks the worst out of all of them. Every time he appears on screen in a movie, you can just see each piece falling off bit by bit. Rider Toys on TV this is a funny yet surreal one. There have been some live action Nickelodeon shows where you can see Conrader toys, except they're modified to be other weird props. Geo is a girl? When Conrader Gio was first revealed, some thought the actor was going to be a girl because of how puffed out the chess piece was. Yes, really, this was an actual discussion in the English-speaking fandom. Starfish Hitler 
a monster that appears in Kamen Rider X. It's probably one of the most well-known Showa-era monsters simply because of how absurd it is. Dragon of the Stars and Flint Kamen Rider Saber had so many rumors floating around about it, most of which obviously aren't true. One of the most popular fake rumors happened to be that Saber would receive a quote-unquote Dragon of the Stars right book to become his final form. Blades would have fur all around his suit in a form called Wild Blades, and your favorite Saber character Makoto would become the all-powerful Kamen Rider Flint. Yeah, Makoto. You love Makoto. Yeah. Makoto. Ah. <sighs> Level 7, Super Riders. A foreign, quote-unquote, adaptation of the original seven Kamen Riders. Splicing in original footage with, you know, old Kamen Rider footage. And then that was renamed into Frankenstein's Kung Fu Monster. Uh, I don't get it either. <laughs> Rider Continuity. Kamen Rider has continuity? Maybe. Yet another debate that's brought up occasionally is if Kamen Rider takes place in the same world or at least in the same continuity. There are some obvious exceptions like Build and Decade that straight up just say they're in another world. But what about the rest? Um, it depends on whoever's writing. A lot of the older seasons did have a continuity, like appearing semi-frequently and yeah, crossovers happen in Modern Rider 2. And we do get some cute easter eggs. But I'd say it doesn't really matter for the most part. It has continuity if you want, and I'm sure that's what Toei is expecting too. Zero one pre-COVID plans. The worldwide pandemic of 2020 affected plans for Toei, of course, including Con Rider Zero One. A few episodes reportedly had to be scrapped, and the next season, Con Rider Saber had even more apparent issues. Mighty Action X is real. Yeah, it is. Mighty Action X was actually released as a game on the Nintendo 3DS as an eShop exclusive. It was available during x aids All Rider Revolution release. GACKT Riderman Concept The famous Japanese performer Gact played Riderman in the Con Rider Decade movie. There was originally more planned for him, which included Gact actually having a Riderman suit designed by Keita Mamiya, but he's Gact. He can do whatever he wants. Official English Dubs even though Kamen Rider hasn't had that many official releases in the States, other Spanish, European, and Asian countries have seen official dubs of the show. In one country, Kamen Rider Kabuto was even shown on Cartoon Network. These English dubs can be considered lost media as not all of them have been found, but we know they exist and we do have full episodes of a few of them, let alone footage of the lesser known ones. Kuga Missing Movie Every Heisei Kamen Rider season has at least one movie, so it's strange that the first season of the Sarah, Kamen Rider Kuga, lacks a film. Mention of a movie was brought up during Kuga's comedic episode 50 ending. There were plans for a feature film, and details came out that it would involve Kuga going to the United States to fight a wolf Grongi. Though nothing came of it, the wolf Grongi would make an appearance as the Grongi leader in Kuga's world and decade. Kuga English Theme Kamen Rider Kuga's opening, called Kamen Rider Kuga, has an English version sung by the original Japanese performer, Masayuki Tanaka. It's not as well known, but it's interesting to know that there was an official English release before the more known Be The One by Beverly. form. In Kuga, Ra Barudade, or the Rose Tattoo Lady, is shown to never turn into her grongi form at all, preferring to stay in her human disguise. We only see her grongi form partially, as she placed her hand on the bad grongi's face in episode 3. Madoka Magica inspired by Rai Uki Madoka Magica's writer, Gan Urobuchi, had an interview saying he liked Konrad Ryuki. It implies that his work at the time, Madoka Magica, had some inspiration from it, though I personally don't see the reasons why. Stolen x aid Level 1 Suit Allegedly, Conrader x aids Level 1 Suit was stolen from behind of a truck. Uh, th that's it? <laughs> Common Rider Winger Fake Conrader leaks are as old as the series itself. One fake leak I've seen around for a while was Conrader Winger. It popped up in 2017, 2018, and 2020. Yeah, it's been around for a while. <laughs> Decades True Ending after the airing of Conrader Decade's cliffhanger ending, a commercial was shown of what was called, quote-unquote, Decade's True Finale. <laughs> However, it was later revealed that these were literally random clips compiled together just for the commercial, and a real ending wasn't even finalized at that point. This was labeled as false advertisement and Toei got into some heat due to it. These clips will later be used in a dream sequence during the Decade and Double crossover movie. Level 8. Kamen Rider Z.O. on Sega CD 
in America. For no real reason at all, Kamen Rider Zero was released as a Sega CD game, and its full title is The Masked Rider Kamen Rider Zero. This even predates Saban's Masked Rider as being the first English adaptation of Rider to be released in the United States. It's one of those FMV type games similar to Dragon Slayer, where you press the correct directional input at the right time. It was a bit unique in that it also had a full English dub. He's following me! Hey you! Say something! A monster. <laughs> monster. <laughs> Don't laugh. Even though you might as well just watch the original movie instead of playing a watered down Simon Says, though it was what we got at the time. Female Kuga concept art. This actually ties back to the Heisei revival of Kamen Rider as a whole. Kuga was originally conceived as being way more showa like, with less drama and more camp, kind of like Car Ranger. Masato Hayase, an artist and assistant to Shitori Ishinomori before he passed, was a designer for the project, drawing writers with exposed mouths like Rider Man. One of the main writers happened to be a woman, whose main weapon was a fencing sword. Ren and Yui in the novel. Ren and Yui are said to be, um, friends with benefits in the Ryuki novel. I... I just don't understand the novels. <laughs> Unused forms. Pretty self-explanatory, but basically, there are many forms that don't leave the concept stage, such as final events for some of the Ryuki writers, or even forms that are hypothesized in the show that aren't realized canonically, such as Double's Cyclone XL Extreme form. Then there are trial forms, which don't appear in the shows properly, but are shown to exist for writers such as O's or Build, who can mix and match their writer gimmicks for the season. These are mostly shown off in magazines. Hibiki's Production Toei actually wanted to end Rider after Blade due to low toy sales. They conceived Hibiki as originally being a remake of Shotaro Ishinomori's original, Henshin Ninja Arashi. After Bandai's main competitor, Takara, debuted Mononsenki Ryukendo, they decided to step back from remaking Arashi and restructured the project as Ongeki Senshi Hibiki, and then Ongeki Rider Hibiki, and then they settled on Comrider Hibiki, cause they don't want a quote unquote new competitor to be pitted against Ryukendo. Hibiki had various problems throughout its production, the most well-known case being when Toei changed the staff after episode 29. Aruto's Theory A fan-made theory stating that Aruto, Conrader 01, is actually a Huma Gear. Of course, this didn't turn out to be true, but it would have been cool if it was. Lost Spanish Dubs Much like the English dubs entry, we know that some Spanish dubs exist too, but again, they're lost media. Cancelled Batman Crossover Ishinomori met Batman artist, as well as co-creator of Robin and the Joker, Jerry Robinson, at the Yokote Masuda Manga Museum during an exhibition of Western comic book art in 1996. Ishinomori was already well aware of Batman, having written the manga version of Toby Tachibana to be inspired by Alfred Pennyworth, as well as parodied Batman in several of his gag mangas. The two became fast friends, and Robinson proposed that they write a Batman vs. Comrider comic together. Sadly, Ishinomori's health was getting worse leading to his passing in 1998. The Curse of Kamen Rider Manga This is a manga that details the lives of lead Kamen Rider actors after their show's end, and how it's joked that they're cursed with various inflictions, such as Hiroshi Fujioka's motorcycle accident during filming, as said before. It's a good, yet pretty sad read on some very real problems that the actors face. Ryuki was inspired by 9-11. After the terror attacks that occurred on September 11th, 2001, TV Asahi, a production company with Toei, said that, quote-unquote, now more than ever, we need to teach kids about justice. Around that time, Toei producer Shinichiro Shirakura wanted to challenge that belief and specifically the idea of justice. The event happened during Ryuki's planning stages, so yeah, Ryuki had a bit of direction due to it. You are not supposed to know about Trinity. An infamous incident where some Twitter users were discussing with Shinichiro Shirakura about Final Forms. Then one user asked Shirakura, who I may remind you is a longtime Toei producer, about Geo Trinity. This was back when Geo was airing and we knew about Trinity only through leaked toy scans and they weren't supposed to be public yet. So Shirakura replied with, you are not supposed to know about Trinity. Many cite this incident as the reason why we don't see toy scans anymore. And while yes, it was a big thing, Toei has been cracking down on it for a while, so it wasn't the only reason the scan stopped. Level 9. Our world is part of the Kamen Rider multiverse. This stems from the movie Kamen Rider Heisei Generations Forever. Spoiler alert! Three, two, one. A major plot point is that the characters in the movie find out that they're characters from a TV series that have been wished into being real in our world. You could say we exist alongside Kamen Riders after all. 
Hiromi Zushima blacklisted. This was a rumor which spread throughout the fandom that Conrader Kabuto's actor, Hiromi Zushima, was blacklisted and not allowed to return to Toei. Again, it's only a rumor, and Muzushima himself went on to say that he's just been too busy with other projects and spending time with his family. He also runs his own talent agency, which is something that other popular actors in Japan, like Takumi Saito, do. Tetsuo Kurata Controversy Comrader Black's actor, Tetsuo Kurata, said on a live stream that he wasn't appreciative of being a common writer and that those watching weren't really his fans if they weren't donating. Kurata later apologized for these statements, but that didn't stop the Super 1 comparisons. We'll get to that in a bit. Zedo sequel. Zedo was originally supposed to start the revival of Kamen Rider, including a TV series and more. Plans fell through for the show, however, so they instead planned to produce another film acting as a sequel to the original Zedo. That also didn't work out, though Kamen Rider J did release the following year after Zedo. Banana New Shoe. If you know this one, then you're officially old or have been in the English-speaking fandom for too long. One fan subgroup subbed a Conrader Deno line as Banana New Shoe. That was forever ago and is what they thought was said. And yeah, I officially feel old. <laughs> Common Rider Gay. This is a writer that was drawn by Keita Mamiya as a concept for the sequel to Zedo, which kind of looks like a cross between Zedo and Doras, one of the villains in the movie. Not many people know about that, but in the corner of the drawing it says Common Rider Gay, which stands out because, haha, his name is gay, even though it's probably pronounced guy, but whatever. Ryuki is gay. Tezuka, Kamen Rider Raya from Ryuki, once told the story of someone close to him. It didn't seem like anything out of the norm, if you're reading English subtitles, but there might have been something more if you understood Japanese. Then over a decade later, in Rider Time Ryuki, Tezuka had a gay sex scene, with Jun, Kamen Rider Guy. Fumika Shimizu in Happy Science. Fumika Shimizu, who played Yuki Jojima in Forze, abruptly retired in 2017 to declare that she is a member of Happy Science, a strange religious movement that's denounced by critics as a cult. Think of them as Japanese Scientology, if that makes any sense. Novel Ki Za. <sighs> okay, this actually makes me uncomfortable, so, um. Basically, Kusaka killed Yuka, the crane orphanoc, which sends Yuji Kiba to spiral down and become the main antagonist. But it doesn't end there, cause he also, and this is a huge warning, you probably don't want to hear this, but it's what happens in the novel. R Mari. Novel Oja. Okay, we've alluded to this, but the novels are just insane. Um, basically, Oja killed his mother as a baby, ate feces to survive, killed some classmates when he was around six, terrorized a bunch of homeless people who looked up to him, killed Conrider Fom's parents, and then disemboweled Yuichi. Uh, I bet he even kicked a dog at one point too, and he was probably Hitler. Yuriko Shiratori's departure. The actor for Hana, Yuriko Shiratori, left Deno's production at about the halfway point, officially for being overworked, but it's speculated that she suffered workplace harassment. Her character was de-aged due to story reasons and Shiratori never returned again, as well as retired in 2013. Need a bar a san. That the Badasan was a mysterious leaker who would post on image boards detailing Toei's release schedule for Ryder. This wouldn't be too surprising if what Netabari san turned out to be false. But they all turned out to be true. So who is Natabarisan? Is he a disgruntled Toei employee? Or Shinichiro Shirakura deciding to play around with international fans? He could be any one of us. He could be you. He could be me. He could even be DX Belt Spyware System Do Not Research. Yeah, yeah, every icebreak has at least one of these do not research things, but they don't mean anything. Every copy of Ganbar Rising is personalized. It's an iceberg video. We have to get it out of the way somehow. But this time, it's actually kind of true. In Gamba Rising, you can save your data with an IC card. And with this, you can even make your Gamba Rider avatar with it. Not much more to say about that. Level 10. Behind the scenes incidents. One more warning for this one, as it involves discussion about incidents that most won't like to hear. And yeah, I'm extremely uncomfortable with this. Even though Con Writer is a franchise that promotes goodwill, some people within the industry have done some things that aren't so good. 
There's said to be incidents of sexual and domestic abuse, extremely difficult working conditions, and blackmail during the production of writer put on employees. A lot of these cases are only now coming out, and there's a developing case being leveled against Toei for the production of Conrad or Revice as I'm recording this. You can say that it's ironic for Toei to have this worth ethic while their shows and properties have messages that contradict that behavior, but that doesn't matter when this work ethic affects real people. If it's really a quote-unquote way we do business, then the business has to change. It's completely unacceptable that Yuriko Shiratori, the actor for Hana and Dano, was treated the way she was. She left the industry because of it, and even then, she never really went public with what she dealt with because of the repercussion. More awareness brings these problems to light, and it might just bring positive change to the properties we love. I like to end this video on a good note instead of a sad one. Take these stories into regard for how you see writer, or anything you like for that matter. Know where they come from and no one to speak out on those issues. This behavior has only gone on for this long because there is nobody to speak up against it. Sorry for getting really heavy there, but, you know, it has to be said. And that's kind of how these iceberg things go for the most part. Still, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you listening. I normally don't talk about these things, and I do have to thank Liz once again for writing a lot of this.